Right now, there are a lot of people jumping for joy at the fact that AMD has reconfirmed the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are on track for a holiday 2020 launch. And for me, this is something that always seemed obvious based on rumors going on behind the scenes, although it did seem to surprise some people. Although not as much as the confirmation that yes, Zen 3 and even RDNA 2 are coming out this year as well. And in fact, RDNA 2 should launch before the next-gen consoles. However, most long-term fans should know that this is something I've been reporting on for months, that all indications point to the consoles, Zen 3 and RDNA 2, coming out in quarter four or maybe even quarter three of this year year although i do have to admit that some fans may have missed where i confirmed this heavily first and that's because it was in my playstation 5 analysis video now i know some of you seem to break into hives when i mention a console but get the ointment ready because they are integral to amd's strategy a show of strength this holiday season they want to launch within a few months of each other rdna 2 and the consoles to make nvidia look silly they want on desktop 4k 120 ray tracing to be on the cards for people willing to pay up and then for more modest prices the consoles at around 500 dollars to humiliate turing and at the same time they do of course plan to launch zen 3 even though it's coming right after matisse 2. So I guess my point with the beginning of this video is that AMD confirming all of these products coming out at the end of this year shouldn't really be surprising anybody. And this is what I've been told for months. I've had zero indication, zero, and lots of information to the contrary that the consoles would miss this year, that it wasn't the COVID problems going on now that would cause it, but problems that would have to come months from now and be way, way worse than what we're already dealing with. In fact, a lot of my information points to this year being one hell of a grind at AMD, and that's because they know this is their year. Their year for a show of strength to firmly establish themselves as market leaders. I mean, and, and not just for the company itself, but just let's just be honest, selfishly, we know that a milestone has been set by Lisa Su becoming the first woman to be the highest paid CEO in the S&P 500. And when you get to that level in a company where you're getting massive bonuses, you need to demonstrate and prove that those bonuses are for someone who's cemented themselves as integral to being at the top of the company. Lisa Su and other AMD executives have been calling AMD a market leader for over a year now, actually. And they know that eventually they have to completely become one, at least for a little bit, for everyone to take them seriously and keep those bonuses coming. And not just bonuses for, of course, Lisa Su. These will go to executives and engineers within the company as well. When you're a salaried employee, you know, I guess what I'm saying is now's the time. Now's the time for Lisa to prove her worth and for all the AMD engineers below her to prove theirs. Now, that's not to say they will stay on top forever, but I do believe that this second half of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 is just going to be a firm AMD golden age, one that I particularly think they haven't ever had. You know, not one as big as we're about to see. And let me cover why, really. That, that's what I want to get to in this video. Um, basically, all of AMD's competitors are just leaving themselves wide open. I mean, I've already covered that NVIDIA's arrogance and hubris has allowed them to fuddle Ampere's launch. Because they're having to switch nodes between some of their Ampere dies, they're probably not going to launch in full force until quarter four. And so, yes, I have had that big Ampere leak, and I do personally think that the very, very tippy-top uh, GA-102 card with the absolute top die and memory configuration should keep the performance crown, but, I mean, especially based on these recent confirmations by AMD, I think it's coming after big Navi. I think AMD is just going to only have to defeat the 2080 Ti, which is really only 30 to 40% better than the 5700 XT. And so, yeah, I think that's it then. I think most likely maybe 
outside of a few paper launches to muddy the waters, AMD's just going to have the top GPU performance crown at least for a week. This is a big deal. This really should be a show of strength in the graphics department, especially because it sounds like AMD might actually finally cut the rebrandy on shit out and have a full RDNA 2 product stack bringing them efficiency advantages from top to bottom. Although, I do want to be clear about this point. I'm not entirely convinced there won't be any rebranding going on. I just I just think there's going to be less than before, right? We already have mixed rumors coming out right now that there are some kind of a Navi 10 refresh being tested, except at around the same clock speeds, and around the same memory configuration. So, what do I think could be going on? And again, this is just my speculation, but I think we could be looking at a... Another R9 270 situation. For those who don't remember, the R9 270 was a more efficient rebrand of the 7870. It came out a year later at lower clock speeds, but it only needed one six pin instead of two six pins. And it basically replaced what was before a cut down 7850. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This could be based on rumors out there, you know, and, and don't forget about the RX 5600M. It's a mobile version of the 5600 XT that can operate down to 60 watts at around 1300 megahertz. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, in other words, if the rebrand of Navi 10 is called like Navi 20 something and it's the 6500 XT, maybe clocked slightly lower than a 5700 XT, but needing just a single 8-pin. Again, remember, the 5600M fits in the same laptops as the 2060 Max Q, and then, well, yeah, they can make a 6500 non-XT, that's 6 gigabytes, and pretty easily sell that for $150. The point I want to make here is I wouldn't rule out some rebranding of Navi 10 into the sub-$200 market, but no one should really complain. You know, I don't think anyone's going to complain if it has pretty crappy RTX performance below $200. And either way, whether it's a rebrand or not, it should be more efficient than the 5500 XT is right now that actually already, I believe, requires an 8-pin. And at the end of the day, that's bringing 5700 XT, which is better than a 2070 performance, to around the $180 price point. Rebrand or not, I think that's going to be pretty epic. It's starting to look less and less insane that the consoles may be $500 and decently stronger than a 5700 XT, isn't it? I don't know why people always have this problem with a moving target. You know, when I said two years ago that the next-gen consoles will probably have SSDs and be around a 2080 Ti level of performance, everyone was like, oh, that can't be possible. Well, if on desktop, something only about 30% weaker than that is half the price of a console, is it that insane? I, I don't think so. But let's stop talking about graphics. That's about all I have to say about AMD's graphics show force. No, now what I want to talk about is the other competitor AMD will be showing a lot more force against. And that's, of course, Intel, who seems to be utterly fucked this fall. In fact, the CEO right now is openly preparing its fanboy to just not look at benchmarks because they don't matter when Intel's losing. I mean, let's go down the list of what's about to happen here. Comet Lake's come out, and yes, it is better than Coffee Lake, but not that much better, right? Zen 2, you could argue, is still the better choice, despite being a year old now. But Matisse 2 is going to come. And despite some people saying Matisse 2 meant Zen 3 was being delayed, AMD's now confirmed what I've been saying the whole time. Nope, they're just launching Matisse 2 because it's easy. Zen 3 is coming, and it will have 10 to 20% higher IPC, at least, I believe, in games, and greater efficiency. In many ways, you could argue Matisse 2 is being launched to make sure they still have the 912 core selling at $500, so no one freaks out when they slot in Zen 3 right at that same price point or slightly higher. And honestly, if people are willing to pay five or $600 for, or, or way more, for a 9900KS, if Zen 3 takes the top, top gaming crown, I think they'll pay as much as AMD wants them to pay for that. And I really don't think that the rumors coming out right now about Rocket Lake are exactly inspiring confidence. And it's not just outside rumors I'm looking at with Rocket Lake. I'll let you guys know now that I've received, 
Well, a tremendous update from a couple of Intel sources regarding just about everything. I can't even say some of the code names uh, yet because I've been told I'm not allowed to. Uh, the way to think of it is I should have one or two Intel leak videos coming soon that are as big or bigger than Ampere in terms of, well, how detailed the information is. So look out for that. Uh, I haven't had time to go through all of it yet, but I will just openly say now that, well, Rocket Lake isn't going to be the worst case scenario. It is indeed better than Comet Lake using a port of a Cove architecture that has been tweaked to try to hit similar clock speeds that Comet Lake has, but that there have been some pretty severe compromises porting, I, well, I can't say exactly yet, to 14 nanometer and it seems like predominantly it's massive die size nerfed graphics and a ton of power usage so again right don't don't look at rocket lake as this savior for intel i, I just i mean if you really think about it i mean what was coffee lake versus zen 2 coffee lake versus zen 2 was the 9900k used more energy than the 3950x while having half the cores and rocket lake will have half the cores of zen 3 and use we'll double the energy again well possibly not holding the gaming performance crown versus zen 3 i think they'll be close just like zen 2 and the 9900k were close but i'm not so sure intel is going to be able to defend it anymore and i mean just like you're hearing on video cards it sounds like Rocket Lake is probably coming at least a month after Zen 3's launch. And so not only will Rocket Lake probably come out at least slightly after Zen 3, it's honestly up in the air based on my information if it will even be able to take pack the gaming performance crown at all. And so that's it then. Do not buy Intel 14 nanometer products. Do not hold out hope that Intel's really got anything this fall. But rest assured, I am going through 10 nanometer Intel information for next year. And I do think, I do think that Alder Lake will be impressive. Although with some compromises that I'm now seeing of its own, I don't think it's going to be as good as the upper estimates we've heard in rumors. I just think it's going to be a way better situation if it can get out against Zen 3 than we're seeing right now with Comet Lake or even Rocket Lake. Although, let's be honest, Alder Lake's probably going to end up fighting Zen 3 Plus, you know, or some kind of Vermeer 2, or, I don't know, I heard Warhol as a code name. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that things may get better late next year with Intel once they have that fully working 10 nanometer node and some impressive new types of 3D packaged architectures, but I don't think it's getting significantly better until we see Meteor Lake. Look, I know when I make those pretty big, you might argue, pro AMD statements, I'm not I'm not an AMD fanboy. You know, I have an Intel shirt I wear and in Intel focused videos in addition to this AMD shirt. And I've actually sold all of my stock months ago so I could stay objective. I really don't have any intentions of buying more anytime soon for that reason. I'm just reporting the news, guys. The news is that AMD's got a show of strength coming. I've known about it for a while, and I don't have a lot of great news to report on the Intel front. Tiger Lake, Rocket Lake will be better than the products they're replacing, but I don't think they're going to hold a candle to things like Cezanne, Van Gogh, and Zen 3. I just don't. And until then, this is AMD's show of strength. Them proving themselves as undisputably being the market leader. The consoles, Big Navi for desktop, Zen 3, and I don't know what sounds like a million <laughs> custom APUs coming out soon. This is going to be one hell of a fall for them. And like I've said many times before, I honestly think for the longevity of the company to build up a war chest, they need a show of strength like this. And it's not going to be next year. I think it's going to be this year. And I'm hoping this show of strength is shoving the gaming community in the right direction. I mean, look, I got into PC gaming in the 2000s, and back then there was just a lot more competition and therefore lower prices. Prices have been out of whack for the majority of the last decade, and it's because of the lack of competition. But that's what I'm saying. I'm hoping this show of strength is shoving us all back into the good old days of reasonable gaming prices.
And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. And like I've said, I've got many more big bombshells and leaks coming soon. So please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell button so you do not miss any of them. Subscribe to Broken Silicon on your preferred podcast app and give us a review. And if you can, consider supporting me on Patreon where you'll get tons of exclusive content every week, including the exclusive podcast only for patrons, Die Shrink, that just came out now, remembering the HD 6000 series from Radeon versus Fermi. All right, thank you for watching. <laughs>